Hello, hello, everybody. And look at this <laughs> 20 gallon tall tank that has just been overran with moss. Now, this started off being my first Blue Dream Shrimp Project tank. And I took the best out of there to start my exit, the, the, my main project. So I guess this is another project. And then I took down a 75 gallon tank full of thousands of Blue Dreams. And put like the best two or three hundred that I found in here. So there's going to be a lot of really good shrimp in here. But we're going to take this down. We're going to put the sort out the Blue Dream shrimp. We're going to redo this tank. And for the fire reds outside. Now the fire, the red tub didn't do really super good. But the ones that are out there are amazing. So I'm going to make better use this. Essentially, all this tank has become is a backup blue dream tank here lately. So we're going to take this tank down to nothing, even change the substrate out, redo everything on this tank, and then we're going to bring in some fire red shrimp. You guys have been asking, when will the fire red shrimp be available? And I've just been saying, well, <laughs> the ones outside didn't really do that good. So... We're going to try to do them in a 20 gallon. I think I got enough shrimp to populate a 20 gallon tank pretty good outside. So let's get this project started. Here we are with the moss removed. Yeah, most of these are pretty good shrimp in here. I might just catch them all out and put them in the the mixed blue dreams because i'm not i don't want to pollute these have a little bit of a different lineage not just since i got them they all come from the original same blue dreams i got years ago but these guys have been different and i really really like where my line is now so i might just go ahead and put these in the mixed ones there's a lot of really good ones though and look at this. That is a crap ton of moss. And my bulbitis on a rock was still alive under there. It started dying and I gave up on it. So <laughs> I have to start caring about it again. When it was all out by itself, it was struggling. Let it be buried in moss for six months. Coming back. Silly plants. So we've got everything out, but just a couple shrimp. And as you can see here, this filter has been giving me fits for probably the last six months. Just barely trickling. So I'm going to take this thing apart, clean it out real good, and see... If I can get it running as it should. Now this filter is like seven years old. Over seven years old. Coming on eight years old. So I don't know. If I have to I may end up having to go by. Oh. There are some new babies in here. I was going to say I didn't see too many babies in here. Yep. There they is. So I'm going to finish taking the tank down. When I get the tank down. See if I can rebuild that filter, take it all apart, clean everything, soak it in vinegar, that kind of thing. See if we can get it going as it should again. If I can't, I'll have to go buy another filter. All right, we're stripped down to the bare tank, rinsing out with warm water. The little motor I filled with vinegar and the impeller. Fill of vinegar in a cup, and I'm gonna work on this getting the shell cleaned out. Yep, got it all put back together and slowly adding the water back in. All right, here we are. We got everything filled back up. Now let's get this Plucko Buddy back in here. 
Come on, man. Only got one hand. Cooperate with me. Come on. There he goes. There he goes. Got to get our little Plucko buddy back in there safe and sound. The good news is I was able to get that filter working perfect again. That's a relief. And to keep the filters cycled, I took out all the filter media and put it in the bucket of water with the Mr. Plucko buddy. So we should be mostly still cycled. Let's go get some shrimp now. Well, this gets interesting. I was sitting here debating on whether I should go outside and start getting shrimp or wait until tomorrow to do it so I can go through them all real good and make sure I do a real thorough job with it. And I hear drip, drip. It looks like where the pump motor is. So I've got the media out and in tank water, but it's dripping out the cord, I think. See I felt it coming out the cord. No, it's up there. Well, I think it was where the pump connects to the housing. So we pulled some water out of here. And now I cleaned it up really, really good. Got it right in this five gallon bucket. Well, son of a gun. There's the problem. It just got too old and corroded, and when I took it out and cleaned it, the corrosion was what was keeping it from leaking. <laughs> well, 25 minutes to the store, 10 minutes in the store, and 25 minutes back, and I ended up getting the same thing. Oh, I just seen a drip. Oops, I guess the old one was a 30. <laughs> oh well, it'll be good enough. We'll stuff them sponges in there. I was able to, that still fit on there for my intake deal I got going on for this tank. So, that'll save some time and hassle. Just plugged it in, you can still kind of hear the air bubbles getting sorted through it. Same exact media, just a smaller box and pump. <laughs> it seems like it's making more of a current in the tank. Alright, here we are the next day in the morning. This water was so cold, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's 55 degrees, but 55 degrees hurts your hands when you're cold. You can see this one was always green. I never really knew what was going on. Usually though, when you have green water, that means the moss doesn't have hair algae. It's like you gotta choose hair algae or green water. I think a lot of times it's better to have green water for sure. As you can see here, the moss is perfect. Look at the <laughs> enormous piece of moss I pulled out of here. That is pretty awesome. Wow. I picked all the moss out, then we started catching shrimp. And I think, like, all these females, all these big females are buried. And they were really only out there for five months. I think this one was just slow to get going. Because all these females, almost all these females are super, super, super awesome. And they're almost all buried. So I'm pretty excited to see what we end up with. And look, just look at the color on those. That is pretty amazing. And then I realized I forgot to show you guys this part of it. Blindly sliding the net. My big net along the bottom. Swooping around, swooping around, and pulling it up. What do we end up with? There we go. 
This is after I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> well, we were able to get a whole bunch of perfect moss. And these are, there's still a lot of really good ones. But there's, these are mostly the young ones that, you know, I want to make sure I'm being super, super picky. And I'd say there's probably like five, six hundred shrimp in here. And these will be going in my fire and ice mix where I put all my reds and blue jellies and all my really project calls. But there's still a lot of, some of these young ones will grow up to be really good. And then here we have like 90% super awesome females and so many of them are buried. The water's dingy because it tub was green but you guys will see them when we put them in the tank these are the best fire red shrimp i've ever seen in person in my life so <laughs> i am beyond excited with these guys anything about the shrimp <laughs> all right Accl we're acclimating both of them now Check back when it's release time. All right, we're all acclimated. And so now we're going to let these guys go. Oh my God. <laughs> They're so good. They are. They're so good. All right, just seconds after we dumped them in. So many little buried ones. Oh, and these little worms, little blood worms, not an issue. I just sat and watched when I dumped the others in the fire and ice tank. I just watched shrimp attack them and eat them. So I'm not worried about that. So many buried ones. Of course, now remember, they just went from 55 degrees to 70 degrees in about an hour and a half. So they're going to take some time to adjust and fully color up, I imagine. But we definitely have a nice batch in here to get this 20-gallon fire red colony going nice and good. All right, here we are about an hour after adding to the tank. And everyone settled down. It's crazy with the reds, it seems like. I mean, I know it's true with almost all lines. But the females are so much better. So, I made sure to pick out some males. The best males I could find through the process. And something I didn't see when I was sorting through them outside. I'm not sure. But look at the back stripes on some of these. That's pretty weird. And like. Yeah, let's see. There's a, one right there. There's like the back stripe. Covers more than the red. <laughs> Great big old shrimp. So I'm going to let these guys breed out. I think there's a little over 100. So I'd say like 100 to 125. But there's probably at least 15, if not more than that, buried females. Let's see. Yeah, of course they're hard to see. Yeah, that one is. There's like that one is. That one is. That one is. That one. Is, that one is, yeah, 
There might be like 30 or 40 buried females in here. So I'm going to let these guys drop their babies and see where this line stands. There ought to be a freaking whole bunch of shrimp in here within the next month or two. They'll be crawling with babies. <laughs> I think, like I said, I think I mentioned it earlier. I think they're only out there for five months, and sometimes new setups just take a while to settle in. I think we just ran out of warm days. I think that's what happened. So I'm sure most of these are the ones I put out there to begin with. And there are some younger ones that are pretty good in here too. So I'd say that tub is probably third place for worst. But this one was better than I thought. Like the blue jellies. I only pull, I put in like 300 and only pulled out about 100. And then the snowballs, I probably put in about 300 and got about 250, maybe 300. And then these, I probably put about 250, 200 to 300, I'll say. And I think we got about 100 of these, so obviously I lost some of the originals because the originals were all like this so that i was at least i was able to recover those and then i put all the young ones because i want to make i wanted to be super super picky so i only picked fully grown fully perfect adults i'm not sure how i feel about those ones with the giant back stripes i didn't see that when i sort them but might just be because they're so old. Because they're great big, huge mamas when they're out. When I put them outside and they lived outside. All summer long. And these did and grow like crazy outside. Alright. I've gone enough. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you guys watching. And all your support. Bye.